What's going on, guys? Welcome back. We're going to be opening some more of Frank's card orders from the internet, all around the internet. This week, we have the scissors ready because we have a bunch, bunch of bubble mailers. So instead of just tearing them with our savage hands, we're going to be cutting them. We're going to be cutting them up, cutting them up with the scissor. So we'll start with this one directly from TCG Player themselves. Directly from Papa TCG. Which for those of you who don't know, I was a an employee of TCG Player for about seven years. Like 20, 2009 to 2016. I was their editor in chief and I did a lot of the community work and I was producing two articles a week at that time. Look at this. Look at this little, what is, look at this. I've never seen this. Cards inside. Then you open it. Okay. I know this email by heart. I'm very familiar with having to, having to complain and be like, hey, there's something wrong with my order, guys. Can you fix it? Let's get these guys out. Oh God, everything's falling. Okay, so we have Boromir, Gondor's Hope. So I first saw this guy from the Lords of the Ring Commander set. And I was like, whenever Boromir Gondor starts on the battlefield, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a human or artifact and put it into your hand. Okay, great. So it's literally just the three, four, four, four that draws you a card, like it's a Militia Bugler. All right, that's probably fine. And then I read, or attacks. Got a lot better. So you're drawing an extra card every turn from this guy? That's pretty cool. I'm a fan of that. So I easily, picked up four here's three and i didn't even realize this was a card i have two pashalik 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 mons pashalik mons in my play stuff because it sees it sees play in like some of the goblin decks and like legacy and i didn't even know that there was a retro frame version of it so i was like oh wow that's awesome i'm gonna pick up two and you know what man i complain about the number of magic sets a lot because i think it's overwhelming and i think it's hard to keep up and i think by and large, my interest has waned because of it. Because I just feel like I'm always out of the loop. I feel like there's always something I need to catch up with. But I will say it's kind of fun sometimes to find a card and be like, I didn't even know this card existed. And Dominaria Master came out like several months ago. So to still be like discovering different borders and different, you know, versions of cards from that set is, it's kind of cool. This one is taped in here, so there's literally no way to, to get it out without absolutely destroying the the envelope and the invoice because it's it's not like painter's tape. It's literally like really heavy duty plastic tape. So you know, not my favorite, but people people use what they use. You know, they ship how they ship. What are you gonna do? Arbor Elf. Look at that guy. Again, if you remember the last video, I went over a bunch of um, reprints that were in the Lord of the Rings set that just look cool, and I kind of want to have Lord of the Rings versions of them. So Arbor Elf definitely fits the bill. Okay, I was seeing if there was more Frodo. Apparently this is the only Frodo. And it is Frodo Sorin's Bane. One, two, four, one. If Frodo Soren's Bane is a citizen, it becomes a halfling scout with power and toughness 2-3 and lifelink. So it becomes a 2-3 lifelinker for 2 mana. That's pretty good. But for 3 mana, for 3 black, if it's a scout, it becomes a halfling rogue with whenever this creature does combat damage to a player, that player loses the game if the ring has tempted you 4 or more times. Otherwise, the ring tempts you. That's cool. That's a cool design. I don't know if I've ordered, I don't know how many I ordered of these. I think this might be the first one I've, I've, I've received, but I'm not sure if this is seeing any play. Usually my orders are like, I'll go down the lists on Magic Online and I'll be like, okay, cool. Frodo's seeing play as a three of in this deck. I'll pick up three, you know? So then we have two more Samwise Gamgees. Went over this guy previously. Very, very good. Four of in combo decks. Balrog Durin's Bane. Also went over this guy. And two Wizards Rockets. That completes my Wizards Rocket borderless playset. This card is just cool, and I'm sure it's going to see play somewhere. It's literally a one mana card that cantrips and smooths your mana. So, you know, not bad. All right. 
right, what do we got here? What does Papa have here? Oh, fascinating. Is that right? Hmm. I actually didn't know I had another one of these. This is my third and as of now final copy of the One Ring. Beautiful. It's just such a gorgeous card, man. They did such a great job. And we mentioned previously that we would check the authenticity of a card. And I think this is probably the best card we can do that of. Oh my god, watch it not have battery. Well planned. So we can we're gonna look for the green dot and make sure it's looking good. It is looking absolutely perfect. That is your your perfect green dot. I'm making that the thumbnail now. That's good. That'll that'll engage people, right? People will be like, what's he doing? Yeah, so definitely real. Definitely looks great. Third and final copy of the One Ring as of now. Probably going to wait to pick up any more until I see what happens at the Modern Pro Tour. Because it could be a fluke. It could just be a bunch of decks that just do terribly. Or it could be in, there could be 32 copies in the top eight, which is also a thing. I remember doing coverage one time. I was doing coverage at the peak of Jace the Mind Sculptor. And the top eight, it was Dallas. It was a Dallas Grand Prix. And the top eight was four copies of Teamer Ramp with Inferno Titan and four copies of Cawblade. So every deck in the top eight had four copies of Jace the Mind Sculptor and four copies of Preordain. And after that event, both Jace the Mind Sculptor and Preordain were banned. This is a cool one. This is a sweetie. Wow, that's a good looking copy. They have this listed as moderately played, but this looks pretty LP to me, man. This looks really good. There's some, there's a little bit of whitening on the, on the side there, but that's, that's a solid looking LP. Yeah, this card is really sweet. It's seeing play in pre-modern, as you can imagine, but it's also, it also sees play in Legacy quite a bit. So it felt like I should finally pick up one copy of Humility just to have it. Should I put a plant? I have a, I bought a little succulent and I can put it like right here and I can be like a typical YouTube. It could be a YouTube video where like I have a little plant in the corner. Just add a little color, you know? Wouldn't that be sweet? Oh, these I'm excited about. So what I've been doing is I've been picking up basic lands for pre-modern. So I, I went through and I've, I've, I've actually still haven't decided fully. Maybe I have, but just recently. It took me like, I've been doing it for like two weeks, but I've been going through all of the basic lands that have been printed that have retro frames. And that's what I'm gonna use for pre-modern. Those are gonna be my pre-modern lands. So something like Urza Saga, you know, uh, Mercadian Masks, Invasion, etc. So this is one of my absolute favorite lands ever. And I was gonna pick it up for my Vintage Cube. However, they were a little too pricey because the Vintage Cube, I have 34 of each land. So I didn't wanna buy 34 copies, that was a little much. But it seems like these have gone down and I think it's because they were reprinted in Dominaria Remastered. But this is my absolute favorite swamp, I think. It's by artist Romas. <laughs> I don't know, doesn't do a ton of work, but this is like one of my absolute favorite swamps. And so I picked up 20 of them. This is not all of them, but this is some of them and they all look very good. Maybe that can be the... Thumbnails for days, man. I'm just making so many thumbnails. But yeah, I mean, I, I love this art. And I think it's super cool. And it looks like a swamp. Like I look at this and I'm like, that is very clearly a swamp. The color matches the color profile of a swamp. There's not like an island in it or a mountain in it. So you're like, is it a bad land? Is it a bayou? I don't know. I mean, obviously you're not gonna get confused, but like, it's just such a good looking swamp. 
so I'm so thrilled about those. The, like, this is a swamp I've wanted to pick up for a while, but it's always seemed a little bit prohibitive to get like a bulk amount of them. So it's nice to have been able to do that. Oh man. So the worst is like when you try to open it like this and it's taped in there and you're like, okay, I really just can't open it like this. But then they've also taped here. So it's like, I can't get in here and I can't get in here. So what's the play? Just rip the tape off the edge like that. Yep, and look, taped in. I don't understand the taping in. Does like, do packages like move? Is it gonna go somewhere? I don't think I understand, but I don't ship as many things as I receive. So maybe it's just a, maybe I'm just a pleb. I don't know. But anyway, remember those Hornet Queens we got in the last video? We have their babies. Yeah, we got these sweet elf warrior tokens to go with our Hornet Queen. Wait, no, just kidding. Look at that. That's such a cool insect token, man. These are so cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I think I ordered sixteen total. But yeah, that's the Hornet Queen that goes. That's the insect token that goes with the Hornet Queen from the Lord of the Rings Commander sets. Those are super cool. This is another one that's taped at the top. Let's see if it's also taped at the sides. It doesn't look like it. Looks like I can just. Oh, it is. Damn it. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. Like. It's not. I was just, I was just, I misled myself. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, it is. So sometimes when they tape it like this, they taped it closed. Like, I'm not gonna deal with tape. I'm just gonna cut it off. Yeah, get that thing out of here. And then we can just open it. Okay, we got. Uh, this is a squee goblin and bob. Sometimes there's like, sometimes I'm very suspicious of, of MPs. I'm like, all right, it's MP, but you're pushing it a little bit. And one copy of Propaganda, one of four that I picked up. So this one looks much better. This one looks great. This I would be surprised if they list this as LP though. Yeah, that's a good looking Propaganda. So I think the thing I'm, I'm referring to when I say suspicious, is if you remember last week, we got a Rotlung reanimator. And upon closer inspection, like, I can probably bring it up to this camera, it's pretty good. There's this mark on the back, which is like whitening, which is not really great. But it's also like, it's like bent down the center almost. I'm wondering if I can get a good, I wonder if you can see it. It's like there's a, there's almost like a crease down the center and the, like you can see it there. And I'm like, that is not, that does not fall under MP for me. Like that's almost damage. So I'm just gonna email them and be like, hey, this doesn't really fall under MP. It's kind of creased. And like once once the ink starts chipping, it's like, well, that's, that's a bit much. That's kind of where I draw the, the line in terms of MP. Okay, this has to be the last one. It is the final in the series. Oh my God, they really taped it in here. It's again, it's a situation where I'm like, dude, I'm fine with, I'm fine with packing it well, but like, oh my God, don't make me like damage the card to get it out. It's the final Orcish Bowmasters that we need. And I'm always like, when I look at borderless cards, I'm like, what is this right here? Oh, is that a, is it damage? Oh no, it's just the art. <laughs> like you gotta check and be like, is that, was, did that come off with the tape or is it just the art? I don't actually know if these are being uh, counterfeited yet. I have no idea. I, I, I imagine maybe not yet, but anything's possible. They're very efficient, the counterfeiters, so. But you can usually tell from feel and look, especially if you've been doing it long enough. I feel like I've been doing it for a while. So I'm kind of familiar with, with how a counterfeit card feels and how it looks. 
this has a lot of things, but it might just be tokens. If so, I apologize. There's a ton of elf warriors. And also one thing I wanted to show you guys as well, which is, it's kind of boring, but I feel like it's, I feel like it's important. I showed off these elf warrior tokens last time. I'm sure you guys remember. Okay, give me one second. We're just finding them in this stack of cards from the last time. So I showed off these elf warriors, right? But they weren't elf warriors. I didn't get them because they were elf warriors. I got them because they were cool bird tokens. Like this bird token is just gorgeous. I think this is the token that Swan Song makes. So that's pretty cool. Swan Song is also another card that had a printing in Lord of the Rings Commander. So another reprint with cool alternate art, but like this bird is just gorgeous. So I was like, yeah, let me get, let me get eight of those. Some of these corners look like they're actually not rounded. <laughs> They look like they're square, which is not uncommon. But anyway, that, I mentioned that because I'm like, oh, here's some more elf tokens, but they're probably not elf tokens. They are definitely two more insect tokens that we were looking for. Here's Growth Spiral, four copies of Growth Spiral. Uh, another card that I just kind of liked, so I wanted to get the Lord of the Rings version. Thought it would be cool. And then, Inscription of Abundance. Let me tell you something that frustrates me. When there's an incomplete cycle of cards, like the inscriptions, there's a blue one, a black one, and a green one. There's a, They're incomplete. It's in Zendikar Rising, I believe. I think. You guys will let me know if I'm wrong. And there's no white or red one. There's no white or red inscription. So it's an incomplete cycle. And then you have an incomplete cycle of an incomplete cycle. They only reprinted Inscription of Abundance in this commander set. So I picked up four, because again, they're like a nickel. <laughs> Super cheap, these cards are so cheap. But I like having cards. And then the other three ops, you saw the last one. Uh, the, the other one in the last video, so. Three ops. Great art, fantastic. A lot of the art in the Lord of Rings set is really sweet. I'm a big fan. Hashtag big fan. And looks like we got a couple more here. Guys, do you think they tape this in? Oh, look, you can see the tape. And finally, I think this is the 16th Hornet Queen, the 16th and final Hornet Queen. What's on this one? These are tree folks on the bottom. However, I did get these because they're cool bear tokens. Oh, these are beast tokens, yeah. These are sweet um, because they're bears, but they're beasts. You know what I mean? Like it's a beast, but it's just bear. And that's cool. So I'll probably use these for like Garrick tokens or uh, Vivian Re... Vivian? Vivian tokens? I don't know. I don't know which Vivian it is. Anyway, they're cool beasts. All right, I got one more that we're gonna do. Last but not least, this is this is the last one of these, I imagine. And all of them are good. All of them are correct. The final fourth Eorling, Eor, Eor, Eorlingus. Boy, that's a real, that's a real mouthful. Yeah. So this is the final one. Everyone was correct. All the sellers shipped them, even though the card went up, which is super sweet. Shout out to every seller that I bought a fourth Eorlingus from. And, uh, Thank you guys for watching again. Really appreciate you watching these videos. Really hope you're enjoying them. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see or anything you want me to do differently. Let me know if there's anything you want me to change. Um, this is still kind of work in progress and I think we're still kind of building an audience for them, but hopefully people, people like them. You guys have left great feedback and great comments and you guys really like the input that I'm giving on the cards and like this kind of like introspection on uh, what I order and why and like where they go and where, where I see these cards and things. So I think it's a cool way to talk about cards from new sets while also like opening packs and like seeing what's in there, you know? So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate y'all and I'll see you next time.